Welcome to Digital Art 101 Boost Camp by Nifty Tribe, powered by Athen Blockchain Group in collaboration with Bob Labs and Adobe Express. This is an NFT workshop. Uh, uh, with that, um, okay, it's recording now. So, this, I'm Ben the Wizard, Venu Puta, um, the co founder of Afro Bubble and um, CEO of Bob Labs. And Apple Bubble was the first Apple inspired NFT collection on the Solana blockchain, which is a cryptocurrency layer one. And if you're here, then you're probably a little bit familiar with cryptos, right? And what they do. You want to think of them like operating systems, right? So, like Ethereum, Solana, Avax, they're like your iOS or Android. And basically, people build apps on them, right? Um, so, it's like uh, it's like the, the computer now has an operating system and right now we're using Google Meet which is an app built on the computer's operating system whether it's Mac or Windows and the currency people use to participate in this ecosystem is uh, they have their own currency so for Solana it's Sol, for Ethereum is Ether right um, like if you wanted to buy stuff on your iOS apps or pay for your Apple Music you use um, Fiat um, which is like money in the cryptocurrency world, you use um, crypto, right? And so in terms of NFTs, NFTs are like one of the very first products that you could literally use your crypto to buy. Uh, for a very long time, crypto was all about speculation, investment, um, decentralized finance came in where you could literally do your crypto, use your crypto to do most things banks can do, right? So like fixed deposit, things like that, right? They have their own terms in it. But um, finally, we had NFTs, which became like digital assets that you can store on this cryptocurrency blockchain that people can buy and claim ownership. And when you own one of these assets, it's unique to you, so only you own it. So today, I'm really just going to break down, um, you know, the whole concept of NFTs and how to really just dive down into the, the facets, right, in terms of building your own NFT collection or community. Um, I'm not tailored to talk more about the one of one space, which is basically if you take a picture or, you, or you're an artist that draws one art, right? And you put it on the blockchain to like sell. I'm talking from the con concept of like creating communities or like clubs, online digital clubs, uh, or like things like this that the NFT gives you assets, that purchasing that NFT will give you asset to whatever you're trying to do so if let's say you own a company that sells shoes and you're like hey you know if you own my nfts right i'm going to be giving 100 nfts out right and if you own the nfts you always get you know first the first dibs on my latest designs or you get the discount on my latest design and you can verify who owns your nfts by using the blockchain right so Think of NFTs in terms of collections or community as access cards, right? For people to sort of gain, you know, whatever it is the company or the NFT community is offering. So yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start with um, a couple of things, right? Uh, the first, totality, right? There are like three aspects to it. Uh, so let me let me say the three aspects before I say before I put them in you know order right. Um, and the first one is the art, right? So usually, um, in order to signify uh, the product, this digital asset online, there's usually an art tied to it, right? So and if you notice, art is really unique, right? So if you own the Mona Lisa, if you own the original Mona Lisa, it's unique to you. You can't replace it for another Mona Lisa. There are a whole lot of fakes out there, right? But we know what the original Mona Lisa is, where it is, and the value of that one, right? That's the only one that will sell for millions and millions of dollars. It's not billions at this point, right? The rest are things you get on the roadside or like your speak up, right? And they can never sell for the original. So, so the art in context, right, is always important. That's the first layer. So the first layer of NFT is art. The second is community, right? So the community is, you know, you're building people around who believe in the concept of the art and the value tied to what this art, right? So 
and it's more like getting your tribe right so and speaking their language think of it as a cult or whatever you may and i think the last most important thing right is utility and the vision of what you want this community to move towards to long term right so i'll be breaking down everything you need to know about each and every aspect of this right and maybe tools you can use so um, um if you have any questions please um at any point in time feel free to you know cut me short raise your hand i don't know there should be a chat box somewhere right so you can also just you know put it in the chat box so that so that you don't get lost in the source right so that at any point you're like oh yeah Specifically because things like this get you get boring over time because you're trying to like get so much information so fast uh, which is in which isn't the best right so at any point in time call me back call me out say hey you know then i don't understand this or like could you take that back again or i can't really hear you so feel free you know and uh, and i and i want to uh, what what success will be for me at the end of this class right is you being able to think about ideas and things you can do with an nft collection right and just you know going so I wanted to say both. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so I'm going to start with um, the two popular chains, right, where NFTs have thrived so far. Um, one is Solana, and the other one is Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum being like you know the grandeur, like it started this whole stuff, right, and everything has come up. So like I said, think of this. Ethereum, Solana, has iOS, and Android. They're just operating systems that people have built their NFT collections on. Um, so where are we? I, I, I want to share. I want to share my screen. Let me see. So give me a second, guys. So, so I give you an idea of an NFT collection on both ETH, Ethereum, and Solana. So apparently my internet isn't the best. Well, can you guys hear me? Please signify if you can hear me at any point. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Ben. Anybody? Yes, I can hear Hello. you. Hello? Hello? Yeah, even. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen, right? And if you can see this, please signify. Everything is so sluggish a little sudden. Okay, okay. Probably just taking time. Probably will come up. But yeah, before we before that happens, right? Um, if you can see, so uh, let let's talk about the art, right? So the very first thing that people, you know, sort of get attracted to when you're building an NFT collection is your art. And now there are, there are a couple types of arts, right? You know, art concepts. And that's why I'm hoping my... Uh, hoping... Uh, this was good not too long ago. Don't let the devil in. 
So there are a couple types of art concepts, right? That you know that are community driven. We have the profile picture art, which is where, like, you know, if you go on Twitter, you see people with like animal faces, you know, that wear clothes and it's like half, right? So it sort of shows like a profile picture. It's like it's like a human being or like a like an animal human being, right? So that you know you sort of see it on your profile. So there's there's that style of art, and I'm I'm hoping my screen shows up so that I can really just share that with you, the different styles. But before that, let me see if I can you know. Let me stop sharing, and let me just open something else. Okay, so you know, so guys, I think I'm gonna use my let me my phone. Can you guys see if you can see my my phone screen? Yeah, yeah, we can. Can you guys see my phone screen? Yes, Ben. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, think, I, I think I'm moving to my phone. So, right. I think your battery is about to die too. <laughs> oh, oh, the, oh, okay. Let me try this. Now, give me a second. Into not too long ago. No, it's like it's like the trying to let the death there. Yeah, let me. So I'm going to use my phone. All right, Ben, we, we can see your screen. All right, if you're looking at my screen now.
So if you're looking at my screen now, looking at my screen now. So I'm going to show you the, you know, the styles of art that people usually, you know, use when creating like a, an NFT collection. And I'll show you the PFP style. And I'll show you, you know, just the basic styles, right, that are available. The most popular is actually the PFP um, art. They propagate the whole lot better, right, in terms of brand appeal. Uh, and things like that to really just share to really just profile picture right so when i mean the profile picture nft art style what the profile right you can put it on your social media so uh, this this like like you know you can see the face you can see it um the outfit right and so when you look at the profile picture style i'm gonna open my twitter as well right so that you can see it uh, i'll just share so usually the profile picture is usually a representation that can be that can be used as your social credit and maybe like debbie or when picture right or like must do far pictures and if i go to my twitter right oh, my battery is you know, my charger so if i go to my twitter right you tend to see so you if you see my profile right you can see like this like a profile picture of the nft there and so this is like the first art style right it's just a profile picture it is usually like from neck up right and it helps people just like you know perceive you know use the art to represent themselves online so that's another example right there right you know so just having this cartoonish element as your profile picture and the good thing about this right is that this is what this is this gives your brand like virality in terms of like if people look at your profile look at the profile picture they see a particular nft brand they're like oh yeah that's that brand and they become accustomed to it over time right so it's also a good go-to marketing strategy good go-to marketing strategy when building your nft collection right because you want you want you want a situation where, whereby a lot of people are using your profile picture or like your community members, right? Your presence, the idea of what you're doing and, and all that. So always think about always think about that when creating a collection. Now I'll try and you know check something else, right? which could be on another style so i'm just going to go to one of my this is one of my wallets right i'm just going to i'm going to go to another website right i want to show you on so sometimes depending on your collection right if you just want it to be like or something more minute if you're not looking for that social presence that or oh, like every their yeah, profile and the next concept is just like a utility based and this could be abstract it could be anything it's just a representation of like let me let me open it. I'm just going to open another website and um, the famous marketplace for trading NFT on, on the Ethereum blockchain. Yeah, just think about this like Amazon, 
but for buying and selling NFT. And guys, we it's not that complicated. It's just buzzwords or you know geeks coming together and creating new technologies so that it's not that it's not that deep. One second, I'm waiting for this. Uh, After the class, right? I'll just send you the document so that you do different art stuff, right? Just then start thinking that you would love to create an NFT collection, right? What are the things you want to do? Um, yeah, so like that's that's like the first step, right? So the art, the art is like the most important thing. And then it's done in layering, right? So if you've noticed, if you've been to any NFT collection site, right? You tend to notice like you see like maybe the people dropping like 10,000 of these collections and they feel like they're the same thing, just cut differently. And you, you're probably thinking to myself, how do I get to draw 10,000 of this artwork, right? So if even if I was an artist or I got an artist, like how would I get him or her, right, to really just draw like 10,000 of this collection? And while that seems like almost impossible, right, um, we live in an age whereby we, we have, you know, we have the gratitude of the computer to help us really just do a whole lot of the things that that we need to do right so no you won't have to draw ten thousand of these collections no you won't have to paint them but you're going to have to create the traits and here's what i mean right so i'm going to take you to you know just a youtube account right Okay. Let me take you through a YouTube account, right? Um, so, um, you can also write this down, right? Because I'll just take you through it. So, it's called, uh, the name of the guy is Hashlips, right? And basically, Hashlips literally just, you know, shares word for word right how to generate your own L nft collection like your ten thousand so like create ten thousand nft artwork right and what he does right in this session is really just dive with you on you know how to create layers right so there's there's always going to be a base layer so the base layer can be the human being right so think about it when you create when, if, you, if you ever played video games or you ever had to create a character right or your your bitmoji 
right? You wanted to create a character on your Bitmoji on Snapchat, right? There's a basically, uh, which is probably like the naked person, right? Just a human. And then you have to like give it a shirt. You have to give it like a cap. You have to give it like a shoe, right? So those are the different layers, accessories. So like the base, the first layer is the background. So first you have the background, right? You just have like, hey, like red, it's red, yellow, black. And you're going to create like maybe like 10 of these backgrounds. Then you're going to create like the human body, right? So, or like whatever the art will be. And that body could be, it could be, let's say you have different shades of color. So like think about the different shades of, you know, of humans, right? So you have melanin, you have white, you have like brown people, and you just have those shades of color. So think of that as the next layer, right? And and this, and, and if you go through high slips and it just really, he really just, you know, dumps this down a whole lot more better than I will but that's how it goes it's like you have the background you have the human body then you want to give it accessories or a cap or hat you know like glasses right so by the time you create like 10 10 10 of these layers it's you most likely you're going to feed it to a computer program to generate as many as you, you can right so the computer program literally just says hey the computer program literally just says, hey, you know, I'm going to like sort this into 10,000 different ways, right? It's going to do the whole permutation and combinations. So that's why you really don't have to like worry about creating 10,000 arts, but you're going to create the traits, right? And that might be like, it could be up to like 200, 50, 100, depending on how diverse you want the, the quality of the art to be. And when you do that, right, because if you go through Haslips, right, he talks about you doing that, you know, so if you know a little bit of code, right, you can write that. But there's also a tool, right, that you can use. Um, let me see. It's called the NFT generator, right? It's a paid tool at the moment, right? Let me, yeah, NFT art generator tool. So this and this is very nice, important too, right? So it, if you get started, right, you can, you know, this is stop, 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 stop. So basically, when you design all your artwork, right, rather than you know coding it or like finding somebody who could write a little bit of React, right, that knows a little bit of Node.js, um, you can just feed those traits in in other right on this tool. And boom, it, it will literally generate as many as you want. So if you look at the tool, right, it says background, you can add another layer, body, right? You know, add another layer, um, accessories, which should be like glasses, clothes, you know, right? Just, just an easy tool. Um, play around with this in your time. This is after creating it. In fact, just create like five different, it could be anything. Um, you know, just make sure that you can see it separately, right, in your spare time. Um, accessories, uh, weapons, whatever you want, right, or whatever you're trying to create in terms of, like, um, creating a PFP collection for the community. So this is a tool that will simplify it. So you can go to Hashlip to really just see how they go about, especially the different traits. And then you can come to NFT generator to, to really just test that out, right? Really just test how the collection will come out. And it's usually fun because you never know what you're going to get. That's the exciting part about, you know, all these right? things that when you, when you saw that, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know, like, the art could come out that way, right? So um, that's something you want to want to really look at, right, in terms of how everything just comes out and so yeah once you have the art right and, and and like i said right your art should speak to the people you're trying to talk to or to like the message you're trying to get across it is important that when you're creating a, a style of art right is that it, it makes sense to your users um for case study right um when we did afro bubble all right um, and i'm just gonna go to it was based on a story right it was based on the queen anna law and uh, we created nine tribes, right? Nine different clans and nine different skin tones, right? That would sort of fit into different people, 
right? We actually traded, um, it was, so we have like the hackers, you know, just different aspects of it. So we're talking to like a, a specific group of audiences that loved storytelling and also loved the idea of fantasy, right? Fantasy and just lawmaking. So, and we created different characters for that. We created the Washasha clan, you know, so we created nine clans and those were like nine different traits that were attributed towards the collection. And something that was very popular about it, it was something that was, is that the traits, the, 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 the clans were denoted by the color of the bulb, right? So if you can see my screen, sometimes you're going to see like a gray type of bulb. You're going to see green. You're going to see blue, right? You're going to see something pinkish. You're going to see, you know, um, brown, pink. You're going to see white and orange, right? So these were like different background traits. These were different background traits to really just attribute, you know, the characters, right? Uh, if you also look at, I'm, I'm going to open uh, let me check World of Women. Let me look for something. So I'm going to open another collection, right? So let's say Women of Mars, right? And you can see, and hopefully the screen is big enough for you to see, but in your spare time, you can also go and check that out, right? So if you check the collection, it was like Women of Mars. It was literally different types of women with different outfits that were, you know, that look like Mars, right? So imagine you're doing like a, you know, stylish women, like if you own a fashion brand, right? And, you know, that works. And you're thinking about, oh, all, and let's say all the styles you're going to attribute towards your collection are like styles that you're actually going to build within your physical brand. Um, let me see if I can share something else, right? Which is a Yoruba Demons, which is another collection, right? Um, and just to show you what they did with their collection right so they basically dressed you know different guys with different skin tones with different yoruba attires right so and you know they were doing a fashion brand nft whereby so some of the people within the collection will get these attires you know sent to them and the only way you could verify who will get what is because they own the nft which is unique to them Right, so uh, so that's the whole concept, right? Is that the art should speak to your preferred target audience at every time, right? So when you're thinking about the concept of the art, right, it is important for you to think about who you're trying to build this art for, and how that will really just you know take their brand to the next level. Now there are other styles, right? They're, they're basically, uh, oh yeah, let me see if I can. Since I'm using my phone, right, so I'm gonna open open c right and share the other art style and sometimes you're creating a collection just for access it could be like an access pass right so like for this this is like the nft ng pass and basically what the pass gave you was access to like you know tickets to an event so if you can see it it looks like the same thing it's just different colors and the different colors just represent the the level of access so whether it's vip regular right so think about maybe a uh, whiskey at the beach right and you're doing a ticketing event and you're using nfts right and then you just put them in different colors but you can see the difference between this and the profile picture is that nobody's going to put this on their profile one two it's just you know it's the same art style and you can just be changed with different colors right and most times things like this are either to like have access to a software or have access to like um, certain perks being a community or like either ways right so yeah that's the concept of the art right so this is how you think about the whole process when you're creating the art right is that hey if i'm creating art right who am i creating it for and what type of art style will probably work for the type of community i'm building right if you're looking for like the attention economy whereby you want a whole lot of people to like you know 
talk about your stuff, use them as your profile picture, things like that, right? You can go around, you can go the PFP route. If you're looking to just, you know, set up communities that uh, to access to tools or events or like, you know, very quick things, right? You can use um, just this basic ad style, right? So, yeah, the, the next bit, right, is community. And just before you get to community, right, there's usually the roadmap. So the roadmap is like your business plan because you want to think of NFT collection as a pre-raise for whatever you're trying to achieve. So basically, you're telling people, hey, I'm, I'm doing this 5,000 collection artwork. And if you own one in the future, you're going to have access to this, 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 and this. Right, that's really how simple it is. And by the time we get to a certain point in time, as we grow and expand, we're going to increase the access to this, this, and this. Right. So, it's so it's simple. So, like for us at Afro Bubble, right, it was simple. If you own the Afro Bubble, right, you get access to a certain degree of profit sharing into the DAO that we of the collections we launch on our launch pad, and also you get access to discounts on merchandises and everything we're building within the brand that culturally represents the brand so those those are like the the concept and that's usually tied down into a couple of things um your roadmap is usually the direction where you're going and the utility tied towards it uh, and i've just opened bob labs on my phone my phone is at five percent I'm my but don't worry, don't if it if it stops, I'll just read to my laptop, right? Yeah. So this is Bob Lab, right? This is um, literally our launch pad. So uh, this is just to let you know that most of all the things that you need, like softwares or learning to do, Bob Labs handles all of this right we literally if you want to launch your collection you have a community we handle this right you don't have to think too much about the technology and whatnot and uh, so for instance right so it, it, so if we hit up a collection right let's let's just look at a collection a collection is divided into like certain promises like i said so your roadmap and what you're trying to do with the collection it's also best to define that in the best possible manner so that the community coming into that you're attracting understands what this is for so this was like a memorable collection right so i'm a plant the description was you know wild plant it was a free mint and the idea was just you know being a plant so uh, for certain utilities and i don't know if you guys can see this so i'll just zoom in you can offer a token and, and that that could be a whole lot you know deep but I, I won't get into that but you can also offer certain things like cloth like you know like whatever your brand is trying to do like i said always think as nfts can be like your customer loyalty to to like your favorite or, your, or, or like your initial customer so it can be a go-to marketing strategy to acquire your first you know level layer of customers um so yeah this is like the roadmap right you know what are you going to do in phase one what are you going to do in phase two what are you going to do in phase three you know and this was very simple like you know phase one we all plan you know we first of all mint the collection which is like you download your know, people come in and buy the collection then high street fashion we roll out quality merch like socks and hoodies right you know that's like phase two and phase three is staking which can be a whole lot more technical then people want to know the team behind it, right? So, which will be embedded in your roadmap. So, who are the set of quality people that you believe will be able to take this project, take this NFT collection all the way? What are their skill sets? What have they done before? You know, why are they the people that we should, you know, bet on in terms of delivering the promises they are promising on this roadmap, right? So, this is very important if, when you're getting to like defining you know what's your roadmap and your your just your your identity as a brand or like an nft brand or nft collection very very vital and once you have that you begin to like play with different channels right um, the most popular channel in order to like get people accustomed to your nft is twitter um twitter um you can use clubhouse tiktok right so now it's time to like really just propagate your messages across so stop me 
<laughs> you know, you propagate your messages across, right? Which is um, very vital. Uh, so you want to go on Twitter, and now this is where you know you do a bit of marketing, you do a bit of reach out, right? You reach out to people within the space, you tell them about your project. You tell them, hey, I'm building this. It's going to be the next big thing. You know, what do you think about it? So you're on Twitter sending the message. And basically on Twitter, what you're trying to do is get people to get into your Discord. <laughs> now, Discord is a tool to manage community, right? Because then you need a place where you can put all these people together and literally just begin to like, hey, tell them, oh, this is about to happen this is about to happen this is you know this is happening and discord sometimes might seem really complicated but it's not once you get the hang of it right it's just a place whereby you can automate certain information right and this is where you keep your community and you can also segment what you want other people to see right so if you look at this right and i'm going to try and okay i can't zoom in this right but if you look at this we have the general chat and we have the verified box chat so the people who own the nft collection afro bubble are, will be will own, will, are the people only the people that will be able to see that verified bob's channel while other people who are not yet part of the clan right or haven't gotten the nft will be only be able to see general conversation so so it's a way where you can hide you know very premium information to the people who actually believe in your community and own your nft and there are ways to really just segment this right so discord is your tool to really just you know arrange all forms of information right so you can see this welcome 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 is where people you know start here so most likely when people come to a discord channel you want to give them all the information rules and things to go by <laughs> Um, things to abide, 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 oh, okay, uh, abide by. <laughs> then you have information which is like announcements. So if we're having, you know, daily announcements, the stamina announcements, things like that. You have the support channel whereby when people have issues, they reach out to your team and you're able to really just communicate. And a whole lot more. It could be a whole lot more like that. But Discord is literally your tool to really just really just you know guide that community in so meaning that you've done a bit of marketing on twitter right you've reached out to like different people and you've told them what you're trying to do you've done giveaways you've told people hey you know we're launching this collection anybody that you know that joins our discord server or things like that right would get will be you know will get a free nft or something right you're using strategies to drive people into your community your mission your vision and all the things you, you you're trying to build in order to get your first couple of customers that will come in and buy your nft on your launch date so if you look at this right you have the art ready right now you're you know you have you have the art ready you have your 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 conv your mission your roadmap right you told people about who you are now it's time to get the attention of a whole lot of people and that that means like jumping into like places where people who are interested in stuff or like doing marketing a bit of marketing budget right into like say hey we're doing this we're about to launch this it's going to be the best nft collection since sliced bread or like body yacht clubs and we're trying to do amazing things with it right so at this point in time, you're in everybody's face. You're trying to get the, the attention of everybody into you. And that way you're filtering through people who would like to be a part of it. And the more they join, you have to keep them engaged. So when people come into your community, you, you're more or less showing them. And uh, so if they come into your Discord, you need to like put things in place to show them, oh, this is what the community will be like even after we sell our NFTs to you. So within the Discord, you can have games nights, you can, and there are so many tools that you can use to arrange games from like, you know, uh, guest days or like quizzes and stuff, right? You know, that's something that 
if you dive into youtube probably you'll find out how to like set up games for people within your community you can also do like in real life hangout hangouts right so you tell people hey you know come together here while hanging out here you know come and meet the team physically depending on what you're doing right at this point all you're trying to do is get the attention of so many people in order to attract people that will be interested in being a part of your community long term by owning your nft so as you build community which is usually the hard part for some people you already have community so whether you have people on your instagram your twitter right they're already you know used to your stuff and you want to just take them to this new channel there's also that method and way so that also works right so if you have an existing community it might be easier right so and you can always get them to talk about things so something that really works well over time right is that by the time you start to build a whole lot a few people on your discord right you know there's something we call reading so it's a process whereby you you make a tweet right on your twitter with your nft account and you tell people in the community to go and retweet like and tag you know as many influencers or as many people as possible and this is just a way like i said of getting attention you're trying to get as much attention as possible and then you're getting the first people who believe in what you're trying to do who ha haven't yet purchased your nft but they're trying to get like a spot to be able to buy it you're telling them hey go out and tell people about this and you reward them with certain things right the reward system and the gamification system is highly dependent on your approach towards it right and that's just the whole process now there are also people who are very you know good at all these things right so they call them community managers moderators right so if you have a bit of capital you want to hire those people right because they are more well versed in doing these things you you as a uh, maybe the founder you should focus more on like the you know the main stuff right you know sharing your vision talking about your project being out there whereby people can do the nitty gritty things within the discord and you can always hire people to be able to do that right or like you know get brands involved so yeah you know you've done the art you're building the community right the, the last and final step is to prepare for launch right so you want to and usually you launch an nft collection on a smart contract the smart contract could be on ethereum or on solana or on polygon depending on the chain which like i said earlier on is like the operating system you want to launch this on right and you want to think about your audience when thinking about where you want to launch on if you're if you're looking at maybe native africans right or like people in africa that are living in africa you want to think about um chains or operating systems like i'll say which are these blockchain platforms that the fee to process a payment is cheap because all blockchains are built different blockchains operating systems they have, have been you know i'll be using them interchangeably in this conversation so you want to look for the blockchain that is you know the transaction fees are next to zero the ethereum blockchain you know has high transaction fees so if you're looking at people in africa and telling them hey come and buy my nft it's probably like maybe like twenty thousand naira but, you're but now to, in order to run pay for a transaction they have to pay like five thousand now that might take people off the wrong take people off wrongly right but if you have like audiences in diaspora they might be more willing to like say hey we'll pay for that so depending on your target audience you might want to that pick your chain so you can use that for like ethereum if you're targeting people in diaspora you know more for an audience right or you know that are already used to the ethereum blockchain simply because there's a lot of liquidity on the chain right um if you're looking for like more native africans you're thinking about polygon or solana um solana has a more active nft community so that might be your preference of choice it is mine and um, but polygon seems to be like you know coming up to speed right these chains they are, they are literally no transaction fees so if you're paying if you're telling someone to pay twenty thousand for your and the, the twenty thousand is the equivalent of uh, the Solana or, or the cryptocurrency money, right? So I'm just using twenty thousand because we're in Nigeria. So, so that's that's the aspect. So you pick the chain, right, based on your target audience, based on the people you're trying to get across to. And now you now need to develop a smart contract. Now developing the smart contract, 
and there's no escaping it. You need a technical know-how, right? There, are, but there are also tools that can help you do this, like WordPress, right? That you won't have to like, you know, think about a smart contract. You basically just hey, plug and play, and they're like, hey, let's go. Um, example of uh, so at Bob Labs we do that as well, right? So if you just come, so if you have your community, you have your art, and we definitely do consult towards the process, right? All you have to do is provide that to us, and we help you launch on launch day using the smart contract, right? So it's like WordPress for launching. Um, there are a couple out there, but hey, I'm not gonna toot the horns of my competitors, right? But basically, that's the whole process, right? In order to launch an NFT collection. Now, after that, it's a different conversation entirely where you have to now deliver on the promises you have told people post launch, pre launch, right? So, post launch is where you now start doing the work, fulfilling your promises, keeping the content going, keeping people energized in order for your, your NFT collection to, you know, keep doing well. So, after you launch, right? You, so, if you launch 100 NFTs, right, you might have 100 users. You want to you, you, you're going to go to apply to marketplaces. So if you're on Solana, even like if you're on Solana or Ethereum, right? Solana, you go to Magic Eden and apply to have your collection listed there. That way people can trade within your collection, can trade between themselves, right? And you can put royalties on your collection, right? So you tell people, hey, for every time you trade my collection, I'm getting 5%. Or whatever volume that is so these are like just this is like just a full you know value chain towards like creating an nft collection and launching it it's it's pretty much um simple uh, you know it, it, it's a difficult process by the time you start pack, you know being practical about it right but it's literally that process um uh, most of the work is usually at the phase of building community and getting people interested. If you do any business, right, you know um, how hard it is to acquire customers, right? So you always have to think about what's the smartest way to acquire customers or what, or if you have an existing customer base, how do I make this very easy for them to integrate with? And that's what we do at Bob Labs, right? That's what we do at Bob Labs. So yeah, I, I don't know if, I, if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to like hit me up hit me up and yeah my my social media handle is venoputa it's the same thing as my name so you can always just once in a while ask me questions if it's getting too technical i'll just tell you to apply at bob labs let's just handle whatever you're trying to do right but um i'm always open to share to teach to point you in the right direction in order for you to get started on your journey or like just understanding the whole process. Yeah, that's all folks. Is everybody still here? Thank you so much, Ven. <laughs> yes, we're here. Thank you, Ven, for the amazing session. So if anyone has questions, you could unmute. Uh, if you have questions for Ven, please unmute and ask or drop in the chat section. Uh, and I mean, you could also reach out to Bob Labs. Um, Ven, if you could drop your social handles in the chat box as well for people who might want to reach out to you or probably uh, do one or two things with Bob Labs. Okay. Hi, Oye. Um, All right. Uh, okay, Oye well, has a question. And so while we take Oye's question, just to um, announce to everybody uh, and sort of like a briefing for the assessments um, for the boot camp, you should look out for an email and we'll also be sharing some information on Telegram as well with all the information about your assessment. So pretty much assessments on all the sessions that we've had um, from digital arts creation to photography editing and as well as nfts and so your um your assessment and your certification pretty much your certification will be based on whatever assessment you complete and um, certifications will be issued subsequently but um a detailed email will be sent to everybody with um, all the information about your assessment, um, 
before the weekend runs out. Uh, so Oye is asking, oh, can yeah. you build a fashion brand with NFTs? Yes, yes, you actually can, right? Um, personally speaking, we're actually trying to do that with Bob Labs, right? So we're creating a fashion arm tag to the NFC. So what you're doing is this, right? You're telling people, hey, I'm a fashion designer. I'm going to be dropping like, you know, different designs, right? And it's, it's so all my NFT holders, one of the best ways to do this, right? You take it as a go to marketing strategy and you tell people if you own my NFT, so I'm going to offer the NFT up for like, let's say you offer it for like $10, right? And you see everybody who owns my NFT gets 50% or 20% discount on every fashion asset I drop. Right. So every time I do a new series or a new, new like um, edition, like, hey, you know, when you use um, summer collection, right, is that only the people who own my NFTs are getting, you know, certain perks, right? Or like, let's say you're only doing like a hundred of this and you're telling people, hey, this is a limited, like this, this collection, right, this summer collection, I'm going to like do only hundred. And it's going to be only for the people who own my NFTs to be able to purchase it, right? So you privately create a section where you can send people that um, the link to, towards that, right? And that's what NFTs are, is that you can segment the people who bought your NFTs within your Discord and provide different information to them compared to like the global audience. So another brand that is doing this is Anybody's, I'll, I'll just Anybody's um so you can check them or you can check them on magic eden right so uh, like i said uh, these assets are like membership cards so it's basically you telling these members right that these are the people that i'm going to offer certain things to alone and then it's not for you to come it's not for you to think imaginatively about what are the things you can do for this set of people they yeah so i guess my phone is, is is done i probably need to find my charger later on so but i'm back here so any other questions guys Uh, any other questions before we go? I'm sure. Okay, so um, then th here's what we'll do. If we have further questions from uh, participants, we'll just collect that on Telegram and um, share with you as well. But it's been an amazing session and I want to say a very big thank you to Ven and everyone for joining. And I wish everyone an amazing weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, Ben. And good luck.